Hello, my dear students, and welcome to officially our first lecture for the electronics 20 ECE 05C module delivered for year one electrical engineering program. Now, this is the official start. Today, we are going to start with one of the interesting lectures, at least for myself, which is the operational amplifier. Operational amplifiers is one of the most famous ICs or what's called the integrated circuits used in the analog as well as in the digital electronic environment. What we are going to do along this lecture is we are going to investigate the main inputs and outputs for the operational amplifier, its different configuration and its integration in different circuits for various application. It's expected to have this lecture around three weeks, the first three weeks of the study, or the first three weeks in the academic calendar. And of course, this lecture, the recorded lecture, will be um, portioned into a set of uh, uh, sections. Today is the first section. So please accept my invitation to start with the first section in our first lecture, dealing with operational amplifiers. Hello again, my dear students. This is our first lecture with operational amplifiers. This is our first lecture with operational amplifiers, as I mentioned, or what is abbreviated by op -amp. So let's start. First thing of all, in order to understand what is an IC or what is an integrated circuit, let's now start to classify our electronic environment into three levels. The first level is what's called the sub-transistor level. Whenever we are interested in uh, investigating what is inside the transistor, or how we can fabricate a transistor. I believe we already have spent nearly one semester in this topic, why we are dealing with what's called the solid state electronics. So this was the first part of your electronics um, education or delivery. Then we have what's called the transistor level. I mean, whenever you start to deal with this fabricated transistor as a circuit element, as you can see here, and you start to use this circuit element in different circuits for different applications, this will be a very big part of our course this semester. And we also have what's called the gate or the IC level. Again, I see here stands for the integrated circuit. Whenever you start to deal with ICs or gates that's functionalized to do a certain function. I believe this semester, while we, you are considering the digital design module, you will also consider this gate level or the IC level. When you start dealing with digital gates like the AND, the OR, the NOT, and all these type of gates. I believe you already have maybe some background about it previously, but you will investigate it in more details in the digital design course. One of these ICs or one of these integrated circuits is what's called the operational amplifier, which is, represents quarter of our module this semester. So, in the first three weeks, in the first chapter, we will deal with the IC level or the gate level, which is the operational amplifier. However, in the remaining part of the module, we will return back to this transistor level in chapter two, three, and four. Okay, but how this gate is fabricated? Basically, this gate, generally any gate, and specifically this op amp, is fabricated using a series of connected transistors together to form this IC. 
Maybe later on in your advanced courses, maybe in digital electronics or maybe in VLSI, you will deal with such a complicated diagram where you will be interested to know how this operational amplifier, how this IFT is fabricated using this huge number of electronics component in mainly transistors. However, for the current study, we are going to deal with this operational amplifier as a black box. It's an input output box. What is inside is not our business for this module. As I mentioned, again, this will be a part of another advanced module. So again, the most scratch level is a subtransistor level. Then when you scale up, you go to the transistor level. When you connect transistors together, then you form what's called a gate or IC. Okay, so what is our, again, this is of course, the, 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 the shape of IC maybe, of, of course you can, you already see such an IC maybe in your motherboard in the computer, maybe in, in your mobile phone, if you uh, try to open it or maybe even in your circuits or electronics uh, previous labs. So this is a normal integrated circuit uh, shape and this is typically our operational amplifier. Okay, so then the question is, what is our operational amplifier? What is its function? What is its inputs or what are its inputs and what is its output? So let's have a look. Basically, we have five important terminal for an operational amplifier. Let's start with these two terminals, the V1 and the V2. These two terminals are considered the input terminal for our device. We call this V1 as the inverting input as it has a negative sign, as you can see here. That's why we call this as an inverting input. And we have a non-inverting input, which is V2. And the output here, this is V out, where the V out is equals to the v V2 minus V in, which is the differential voltage on the two terminal, multiplied by what's called A, where A is the open loop gain. So in a very simple manner, you subtract the voltage here in these two terminal, then you multiply this subtraction with a constant, which is A, then you will get the output. Of course, when A is greater than one, then you make some sort of amplification. Simply speaking, if you have, if you connect, for example, V1 to the ground and V2 to, for example, five voltage, then you have here five minus zero, then you will get five. Then you will multiply this five, for example, by 10. This is a trivial example, by the way. Then five times 10, you will get 50 voltage here. So you amplify the five voltage to get 50 voltage. By the way, this is practically impossible, but let's make it first in a very trivial way. So this is the function, or this is a correlation. This is a relation between the output V out and the inputs, which are, which, is our, which are V2 and V1. Again, we have two other terminals, which represents the supplying terminal. As I, as I mentioned, inside this operational amplifier, this, so this IC, you have a huge number of electro, electron, electronic devices which need a supply. So you supply these terminals by the positive and the negative terminal here. We call this VCC or the positive V supply, and this is VEE or the negative supply. So these are the supply terminal. By the way, these two ter supply terminals will not be a part of the game for our study. So usually we are going to deal with this operational amplifier as a two input, one output device. And we assume that you already have a supply that operates your operational amplifier. This is the first step in our study. So basically we have two inputs, one output. The output is connected to the subtraction of these two inputs using a gain, which calls the open loop gain in a very simple manner. And you have these two input terminal is connected together with an input resistance or generally an input impedance, what we call that in. And this output voltage, which is A times V2 minus V1, 
going to the output terminal through a, as output resistance, which or an output impedance, which is called Z out. This is generally how the operational amplifier looks like. Now, we will first start to make some sort of simplification to this operational amplifier. To make life easy, we will start to make some assumptions. Here, when we are transferring from an realistic operational amplifier to what's called an ideal operational amplifier. So how we can turn this operational amplifier to be an ideal one? This is the ideal operational amplifier. So let's start to examine the differences between the practical, the realistic one, and the ideal one. So first, as you can see, the first change is that you don't have Z, 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 this Z in. The input impedance tends to be infinity. You know, whenever the resistance is infinity, it turns to be an open circuit. I believe you already know this from your circuit module. So this input impedance tends to infinity. And this output impedance is to, tends to also zero. So you have a zero output re resistance and an infinity input resistance. This is the first two assumptions. And the final assumption is you assume that this A or the gain is very, very, very large. You assume that this gain stands to infinity. So whenever I mention in a question, please consider your operational amplifier as an ideal amplifier, then you can easily assume an, an infinity input resistance, an infinity gain, and a zero output resistance. This is simply what we mean by the word ideal operational amplifier. Okay, so again, let's assume that we have an ideal operational amplifier. And let's start together now building some circuits using this ideal operational amplifier. The first circuit is what we will call the inver inverting configuration. We will discuss why we call this inverting configuration. But let me first, before start solving this example, let me first show you a very important difference between this configuration and this configuration. We call this, my dear students, the open loop configuration. That's why we call this the open loop gain. What I mean the open loop is that the output terminal is not connected to the input terminal. They are isolated, as you mentioned, as you can see here. However, once you connect the output terminal to one of the input terminals, we call this a closed loop configuration. So this is a big difference between having an open loop configuration and having a closed loop configuration. Now, let's start solving this circuit together using our, our white paper and bun and see how we can uh, analyze such a circuit. But before we continue, I have to mention a very important note. As far as this resistance it tends to infinity. I mean, this is an open circuit. Then you can easily assume that the input current flowing inside the operational amplifier is equal to zero. Because whenever you have an open circuit, the current is equal to zero. As you know, V equals I times R or I equals V over R. Whenever R tends to infinity, then I tends to zero. So we can assume that the current here and the current there is equal to zero. So let's start doing this. So, okay, let's start making, let's stop sharing and let's turn our camera to see how we can solve such a circuit. Okay, back to our paper and to our pen and let's start solving the circuit. Okay. Perfect.
Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so let's start solving this circuit. Okay, let's first start drawing the circuit you have in your PowerPoint presentation. So we have, this is our operational amplifier. This is the negative term, or this, I mean, this is the uh, non-inverting term, and this is the inverting term. Sorry, again, I'm sorry. This is the inverting term and this is the non-inverting term. The negative is the non-inverting and the positive is the inverting. In your circuit, this positive terminal is connected directly to the ground. And this negative terminal is connected to a resistance. We call it here R1. And then, then the, after the resistance, you have an input voltage called V in. And then the output terminal of the operational amplifier is connected to this inverting terminal through a resistance called R2. as you can see here. And this will be the output. Okay. Okay, so let's first start to ask what is required from us. Basically, what we are seeking for is to have a relation between the input terminal and the output terminal. We have to get to, to reach an expression which can express V output in terms of V input. This is what we are seeking for in this circuit. So how we can make it? Let's start thinking together. First, let's start thinking. Okay, as we see, as far as this two inputs of the, ter of, of the operational amplifier are open circuit, I mean, the resistance here, which should be the input resistance is infinity because this is an ideal operational amplifier, then you can say that the current flowing here and the current flowing there is equal to zero. So this is the first thing, thing you can make whenever you start solving an operational amplifier, ideal operational amplifier circuit. You can say that, okay, this resistance, as this, sorry, this current, I equals to zero. The current here is equals to zero. The current flowing in this operational amplifier, similarly for this current also, is equals to zero. There is zero current here. Okay, then if you return back to our first slide, you will find that we say that V output equals to the A open loop gain, which is A times V2 minus V1. This was written in the first slide we mentioned in our operational amplifier uh, circuit. So this is the relation linking between the output and the input. And we say that, okay, A is the open loop gain, if you remember. So Using this relation, you can say that V2 minus V1 is equals to V output over A. Herein, as you are a genius student, you will recognize a very important point that whenever we have an ideal operational amplifier, that's mean the input resistance is equals to infinity the output resistance is equal to zero and the gain is equal to infinity. These are the three main assumptions assumed whenever your operational amplifier is an ideal operational amplifier. So when A tends to infinity, that's basically mean that the term V output over A will, A will be equal to zero. Because as you know, mathematically, any constant over infinity is equal to zero. Then you can say that, sorry, 
You can say that V2 minus V1 is equal to zero. Or V2 is equal to V1. As you can see, this conclusion is independent on the circuit. This conclusion is concluded from the fact that V output equals the gain times V2 minus V1. And the gain for an ideal amplifier, the open loop gain is equal to infinity. So whenever you have an ideal amplifier in any circuit, in any circuit, you can say easily that V2 is equal to V1, which is very, very important, my dear students. Why this is very important? Because as you can see, V1, uh, or sorry, V2 here, which is a positive terminal, is connected to the ground, as you can see here. So basically, in a very easy manner, V2 is equals to zero because V2 is connected to the ground. And you said that V2 is equal to V1. That means that, okay, then this point, V1 is also equal to zero, which is very weird. Usually we know that V equals to zero whenever it's connected to the ground. However, this V1 is not connected directly to the ground, but it's equal to zero using this conclusion. That's why we call this point a virtual ground. It's a virtual ground point. And this is very, very, very important in any ideal operational amplifier. So your first step in any operational amplifier is to set V2 is equal to V1. And if one of them is grounded, then automatically the second will be a virtual ground. Let's see this on our presentation slides, please. Okay, so I will start sharing the presentation. Okay, perfect. I think you can now see my PowerPoint slides again. And let's operate our uh, pointer. Okay, so this is our pointer. Okay, so as I mentioned, V output equals to the gain times V2 minus V1. Whenever the gain is equals to infinity, which is one of the conditions for uh, ideal amplifier, then V2 minus V1 tends to zero, and then V2 is equal to V1. As far as V2 is connected to the ground, then V1 will be, I'm sorry, yes, okay, then V1 will be virtual grounded. This is very, very, very important. This point here, we call it X, is a virtual ground point. As you will see in a few seconds, this will extremely facilitate our solution because now this point is zero, this point is grounded. And again, please don't forget that there is no current flowing in this branch, which is basically mean that the current flowing in the resistance R1 will automatically flow to the resistance R2. No other option, this point is zero, this current, the current here is also equal to zero, so you can easily make the current flowing from this branch to the, this branch and assuming there's no current will flow in this branch. So by setting this as zero with no current here, with no current flowing inside the operational amplifier, you can say that the current in the resistance R1 is typically equal to the current in resistance R2. So this is what we are going to do now. We will going to return back to our white paper and we are going to make a relation for the current in R1, the current in R2, and then equalize this with that. So let's start making things. Okay, again, my dear students, this is our circuit, as you can see, as we say, no current is flowing here, so 
i here is equals to zero, as you can see. And also, we say that this voltage is a virtual zero voltage. This voltage equals zero volt. So now let's start doing a very simple issue. Let's start doing uh, calculating the current flowing in the resistance R1 and the current flowing in the resistance R2. So I'm now assuming that the flow of the current is from the left-hand side direction to the right-hand side direction. Of course, of course, you can make it in the other direction. Both are assumptions. So you can make it either in the from left to right or from right, right to left. Okay, very, very good. So now let's call this I1 and let's call this I2. And let's start flow calculating I1 and I2. The current I1 is equal to the higher voltage, which is Vm, minus the lower voltage, which is zero, because this point is the virtual ground, over the resistance R1. Okay, what about I2? I2 is equal to the higher voltage, which is zero, minus the lower voltage, which is V out, over the resistance, which is R2. Again, my dear students, as there is no current flowing inside the operational amplifier, so the current flowing I1 is equal to the current flowing I2. So simply V in over R1 equal minus V out over R2. Or what you can say that V out is equals to minus R2 over R1 times V in. If you remember, my dear students, we just say that what we are searching for is a relation between the V output and the V input. So this is the relation. V output equals to minus R2 over R1 times V input. Here, we have a set of conclusions. The first conclusion is the relation between V output and V input is with this constant R2 over R1. So we call this G or what's called the closed loop gain. If you remember, I just mentioned that. Whenever you have this connection between the output and the input terminal, then this is called the full closed loop, or we call it a feedback. It's a feedback from the output to the input. So this is a feedback branch. So we call this a closed loop gain because this is a closed loop. In the previous circuit, we don't have this R2. So it was an open loop with an open loop gain, which is equal to A, where we are assuming that A is equal to infinity because this is an ideal amplifier. This is the first conclusion. The second conclusion is this negative sign. That's why we call this configuration as the inverting configuration. Because if you have a positive V input, the output will be alternated in sign. I mean, if this is a positive, then this will be a negative. If this is negative, the output will be positive. So you are alternating the output with respect to the input. So that's why we call this as a, we call this as an inverting amplifier because we are inverting the input with respect to the, oh, we are inverting, sorry, the output with respect to the input. This is the full, the full analysis for what's called the inverting configuration for an operational amplifier. Let's now return back to our presentation slides. Okay, so back to our presentation slide. Again, this is a virtual gain, or the, sorry, the virtual point, and then we can say, this is typically what we did together, and then we reach this V out equal minus R2 over R1 times V in, or the gain is equal to minus R2 as R1, minus R2 over R1. A very important final point in this 
section is that now in this configuration, the gain is controllable. What I mean, in the first slide, when I first introduced the open loop gain, I told you that this A is a very high, but as you can see, this is a structure or device dependent. It's not a controllable. For example, you buy an operational amplifier, the gain of this operational amplifier is 1,000, 1 million, whatever it is, it's a constant. You are not able to change it. However, whenever you go to this closed loop configuration, your gain is now controllable. You can easily control the gain by controlling the value of R1 and R2. For each combination for R1 and R2, you will get a new value for the gain. This is one of the very big advantages of the closed loop configuration with respect to the open loop configuration where your gain is fixed. Okay, so this is actually the termination of part number one. In part number two, we are going to start to examine the effect of finite open loop gain. I mean, in this solution, we assume that the gain, the open loop gain is equal to infinity. What if the open loop gain is not equal to infinity? Then this will lead to what's called the effect of a finite open loop gain. Whenever you have a deterministic A not equal to infinity. Then we are going to solve together another inverting configuration, but with different resistance bank, as you can see in this configuration. This will be done, inshallah, in our next uh, uh, part of this lecture. So thank you very much for your concentration during part number one in section number one uh, or in lecture number one for the operational amplifier. And see you, see you inshallah very recently in uh, part number two with again the operational amplifier lectures. Thank you very much and see you later.